Today, I'm here to show you how to make one of the easiest types of books. Books from cardboard boxes. Food cardboard boxes like this, like cereal, like pasta, can be turned into beautiful journals easily and cheaply, and I'm here to show you how to do it. So this right here, this adorable little journal was put together using a spaghetti box. This one was put together using a cracker box. And um, both use a no-sew binding so that um, you don't even have to sew it. They're cheap, they're fun, and I'm going to show you how. So in the next few videos, um, I am going to show you how to alter some basic food boxes. But today's video is all about how to get started. What you need to do just to prep yourself to make the different types of journals that we're going to do. All of the journals will be easy. You'll be able to make each journal in just a couple of hours and you'll only need basic supplies. So I hope you'll join me for the paper box journal series. Let's begin. So I'm gonna start first by showing you how to cut the box. So this is just a um, Trader Joe's uh, cracker box, nothing special. And what you have to look at when you're looking at a box is the front piece is going to be the size of your book. Well, not necessarily, but that would be the largest the largest size you could make it. So what I what you're gonna do is you're gonna open the inside of the box and most likely every box is made very similarly. Let's see if I can get it. One side is going to have a seam and that seam is where it was folded over in production and glued with adhesive. That is not the side you want to use. I use for your spine. I use the opposite side because I don't want this lip in my spine. So that's the side I will cut. So I simply take, find where the seam is, and I know this is the side with the seam, and I simply cut down the side. And I'm going to pop the bottom of the box open. And the thicknesses of your boxes will be different based on the uh, food item that you're doing, but it's mostly all a similar weight. They're not the thickest cardboard, but they're, they're plenty sturdy for a journal. So now that I've cut it open, let me see if I can pull back just a little bit. You can see that lip better that I was talking about. That's where that seam is that they glue on and you don't want that. So then all you have to do at this point is cut down the flaps. Now, some people keep these flaps, and I think I will because it helps make the spine stronger, so I'm not gonna cut that flap off. And I'm gonna show you one other quick little thing. You can cut all of, you can cut it completely down so it's just these two pieces in the center spine piece. I'm gonna keep these flaps to make the spine a little bit thicker and more sturdy here. Some people like to keep this here because you can make a pocket here, a really nice strong little pocket, which maybe I will do on this one. And probably just for the sake of ease, I'll show you this one. This one is a Wheat Thins box, cracker box, and you see I've removed all the pieces except the two little flaps, like that. That's how I generally do it. After thinking about it a little more, I decided I didn't like these flaps that much, so I'm going to just trim the box down the way that I normally do, and we'll keep the design of this box as simple as possible. So this is generally how you want them to come out. 
like this. And that's going to give you the base of your book. And you can either fold it this way and have the cardboard on the outside and the this on the inside, or you can keep it this way. It doesn't matter, you're gonna cover it with paper, so it doesn't really matter. So let me show you the three sizes that I'm going to do and what I've done already. So this, this is a cracker box, and I like this size. I'll take this out for now. I have a macaroni and cheese box, because I like the, sort of the tall, thin shape. And then I have a pasta box, and I like this because I have a window. And these are the three journals that I'm going to make. Now, the box that we just cut, I can keep it this size and have it be on the larger side, or I can cut this to be the width that I want it to be um, for the book. So in other words, if I want my, my journal to be more narrow, I can cut it to that length. And then I'll just have to cut the back sheet the exact same. Let's measure that. You saw I didn't measure it at all when I cut it, so I have to find out what the dimension is now. And that would be... Um, almost five inches. So then I would just mark that. Although I just eyeballed the cover when I cut it, it probably is smart to think about ahead of time how big you want the cover, especially if you're folding paper. Something that's easy into a whole number like five inches is obviously going to be a much easier thing to trim in the long run. So then it would be this size. So you can see you can customize the size that you want. You can always make it um, more narrow. So going back to my original three books, the next step after you have decided what size you want your journal is you're going to take a piece of paper and you are going to fold that piece of paper inside the book and take the measurement. Here's a piece of tea dye paper. If I want to go in to this book, let's say, and find out what size paper would fit inside here, I need to lay it down against, against the spine, and I could trace the dimensions like this and then measure just maybe a quarter of an inch past that because we want it slightly smaller than the cover. So I would then go a quarter inch past this trace line, so I may, maybe not even a quarter inch. Just slightly smaller. down and then I'm going to try it inside of the cover to make sure it's the right size and that looks pretty good if 
tight. If I put it against the spine, I can see that it's 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 a nice it's a nice size. Then I will take this and I will use this as the template to cut out all my other pages. So what I've done off camera already is do this process, cut down a bunch of papers to fit each size box and fold them in half. Then I arrange them in little booklets, little booklets of approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets each. Folded, stacked eight sheets of mixed paper, cut them to size, and then stacked them. And each one of these is a signature. One, two, three, four, five signatures is what I figured would fit well in here. And you don't have to measure it. You can just kind of like put it in and see how it goes. Now, it depends what your use is for the book. In this particular case, I am going to be making a sample book. So in other words, samples of things that I make for journals. I'm, uh, uh, I want to start making this a reference book of all the things that I put in junk journals and journals. So if there's a certain type of embellishment or a certain type of um, treatment that I do, I want to have one of each in here. So I know this could get bulky. So I'm giving myself plenty of expansion by making these size signatures. Now, if this was just a writing book, you'd add probably more pages. I have plenty of room to expand. So this is how I set up this book. Now for the um, macaroni and cheese book, I did the same thing. I cut down pages, I organized them by signatures, and they fit in nicely like that. See? And then my, for my spaghetti book, the same thing. This is a very tall, narrow book. I am going to be using this as a list book. Um, as lists of things I need to remember for when, like I do videos or when I list something in my digital shop, it's going to be a checklist of things I have to go through. So I like the fact that it's long and thin. So I have all three of my um, journals cut down and I have signatures and paper folded in, and um, ready to go. This whole process of cutting these three boxes down measuring their original template sheet, and then folding them into groups took an afternoon. Probably took me about two and a half hours, three hours, and a lot of that time was gathering different papers. If you were going to do, let's say, all lined paper or all plain paper, it would take you even less time. Um, I just was going through all my stash, trying to grab many different papers, and that took me a while. So this can be a quick process um, if you're making your journals even more basic than a mixed paper journal. Okay, so I am going to offer this paper box journal series, and I really hope you'll join me. It will be a lot of fun, and it's a terrific way to learn how to make a basic journal. So what will you need? You'll need basic things, things you already probably have, like a glue stick and scissors, and you'll need a stack of paper, whether that's uh, scrapbook paper that you're not using, or maybe um, finding some old notebooks your kids never filled up and taking that paper out, and then you are going to just use the instructions in this video. You'll cut them down and get prep the boxes and make your basic signatures. Next, you'll need to find those boxes. Where are you going to get the boxes from? Well, as you cook dinners or um, pack lunch boxes this week, look at your boxes. One side will be used for the spine. You want it to be a nice size where you only have to put in maybe three to five signatures tops. Mac and cheese boxes are terrific. This box, again, probably a five signature box, um, a perfect size. Now we start getting a little bit wider. The more wide the box, the more signatures you have to put in. So I would say try to stick to your thinner boxes, especially if you're a beginner and you're just trying this out. 
Spaghetti boxes are perfect as are cracker boxes. Cereal boxes start to get a little bit too big. Just be creative. Look in your recycling bin. Look around and see what you already have. You're going to find things that are right in front of you that you never knew you could make books out of and you will never look at your pantry the same way again. I love this project because it's a great way to use up scraps. It's a terrific scrap buster. It's a terrific way to learn how to make journals. It's a great thing to do with your kids this winter and I hope that you'll enjoy this series. So I will start with the mac and cheese journal probably in the next day or so. I hope you will tune in for that. And um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So if you like this idea, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and look for the series. It will begin this week, and I think it's something fun we can do together. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.